to this quote. I'll pause for a minute or so. Have a look at it. And now let's think, how do we contextualize this to a coach's space? What comes to your mind? Mental chatter. Mental chatter. What else? This is... Uh, good. Sorry, somebody was talking. KP, were you saying something? Yes, so this is... Uh, I'm not trying to listen and understand the other person, what they are bringing in. But... Uh, in my head, I'm either trying to validate something, uh, maybe with my past experience, or just want to relate it to what's what's new information I'm gathering. So it is all about me. Mm. Rather than just being curious and learning the other person, where are they coming from? What is their world? Yeah. Mm. Wonderful. Yeah, Prashant, you want to say something? Yeah, what I what I feel is basically uh, Stephen. Uh, what he conveys is basically people like to talk, mm. and somebody is there to listen to them. That is what they're looking forward to. Mm. And when we have a conversation, it is always that we are looking forward that I will talk more, and somebody is going to listen. That is what it is. That Wonderful. that is what happens. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Prashant. Uh, Abhishek. Uh, maybe as a trainer, I use this. Basically, we listen because we wanted to put our stand very clearly. So it's all about me. But when it comes to coaching, it's completely different. We partner mm -hmm. with them. So that's the basic or a prime difference between what a normal person uh, tends to see it, what how a coach look into mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Kavitha says, conversation with partner in an argument. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Such a wonderful example. But if I if I just contextualize to our space, you know, as a coach, um, I came across very interesting data that I read somewhere. It says that uh, an average speed of a person that he can talk at is 125 words per minute. Average speed of at which we can listen is 400. And speed of thinking is 900. Pay attention again. 125 talk, 400 listen, and 900 thinking. So now that the other person is talking at 125, my brain is already thinking at 900. What does that mean? Am I fully present there? Am I really listening to the other person? Or as somebody rightly said, my inner chatter is already on. And this is precisely why listens actively competency really caught my attention. And I thought as coaches, it's worth that we really, really deep dive into this competency and try to learn from each other. I would request all of you or I would invite all of you to do a, this quick activity with me. If you have a piece of paper and a pen, pen pencil lying next to you, uh, let's go grab it quickly. A piece of paper and a pen or pencil. Very interesting activity. I'm going to take you back to your childhood days. Quick one minute activity. Give me, give me thumbs up when you're ready. Great. Let's wait for other people also. Kani, are you ready? Okay, great. Kani has it. Daniela, are you ready for this? I can see Rahul, Sangamitra. Are you all ready? Ready for this activity? Great. So what we'll do is, um, I'm going to tell you to draw something. The test is not at the beauty of the art, but the test is of speed. Okay, so I'm going to say an object. You quickly draw it. The moment I say stop, you stop and we go to the next one. Right? So we start. 
uh, we're going to draw nine things. So don't bother about the beauty. Just make it very fast. So first of all, draw a phone. Phone. Stop. Draw a chair. Stop. Draw a building. Stop. Draw a tree. Stop. Draw any human form. Stop. Draw a butterfly. Stop. Draw a mountain. How many done? Seven. 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 Okay, two more left. Draw a glass. Yeah, Rahul, any glass. And draw a table. And now, probably you can show this in the camera. Or if you are, if you can just somehow, you know, share it in the chat box or whatever you're comfortable with. Just put in front of the camera and let's see. Oh, uh, Sangmitra. Just take a little back. Oh, yeah, I can see. Great. Wonderful. Who else? I'm showing it. Uh, KP, yeah, I can see. Uh, okay, yes, done. Kavitha, show me. Done. I saw. Who else? Sunil? Wonderful. Thiru? Let's see your drawing, Thiru. <laughs> uh, Thiru, we can't see. Take it a little back. A little back. Okay, you are done. Uh, Smita? Yes, I saw Smita. Yes. Thank you so much. Who else? Anybody left? Abhishek? One second, Abhishek. I'm not able to see everybody in my screen. I can just see two people at a time. Okay, yeah. Show me, show me now. I can see yours. Show? Take it back. No, it's, it's not clear. You have to uh, put your blur off. Then only it can. Yeah. Okay, it's okay. Daniela? Show? Okay, wonderful. Great. I want to invite all of you to have a look at the tree that you've drawn. Tree. Can you show? Show your paper. Uh, no, okay. I think the same blur. Blur. Yeah, Never mind. Remove that blur some... Never mind. Have a look at the tree that you've drawn. And, and let's think about that. What is the most important part of a tree? Not not your tree, but otherwise, what's the most important part of a tree? Fung on the leaves. Leaves, okay. The roots. The roots. Branches. The roots. So, branches. Have we drawn the roots here right now? No. Why is that so? Time name. Hmm. What else? No time. What else? The table that you drew, you drew all four legs. That how come we didn't draw the roots of a tree? I think we are so conditioned to, I think I talk about myself. I am conditioned to drawing trees which are like, you have uh, the, the the branch and the, and, and you like, it's, it's a very basic way of drawing. So I think roots never came to me naturally. That's, mm. that's what happened. Yeah. I think for me, it is, uh, when I see a tree, I don't see the roots. Hmm. I see the tree, so visually, this is registered again and again. That's why, because table, you see with the table, uh, hmm. the legs. roots, yeah. I don't see. Wonderful. That's for me. Wonderful. Wonderful. Absolutely. Because we don't see the roots. When we look at a tree, it's only the tree. Now, if we have to draw a parallel of this this activity to our coaching space, it's the same story. If as a coach, if as a coach, I'm only looking at the information that the coachee is visibly giving me. The coachee is only going to show us the tree. The client normally not themselves will show us the rules. 
but if as a coach if we don't understand this why i'm saying listening is that as a coach if i only see the tree i'll be able to take the client through actionable no doubt about that but is that enough and that's why i i strongly now believe is that if you listen actively you are automatically able to demonstrate more presence in the session and if you demonstrate more presence in the session it will automatically evoke more awareness in the mind of the client let's let's go to the next one and now let's reflect a little bit on what are some of the signs that comes to your mind in your own experience when we are not listening to the client we are there but we are really not listening to the clients if you have to ask yourself that i am sitting in the coaching conversation what are some of the signs that i can capture and get aware of when i am really not listening to the client we are thinking of one question to ask the client Hmm. Sorry, your voice your voice uh, got distorted in between. Can you please repeat? So I was saying that we are always thinking about what's the next question to ask the client. Hmm. When I'm thinking about the next question that I may want to ask the client, what else? What else is a sign when I know I'm not listening? parallel processing hmm parallel processing as in uh, as in possibly if something that the client has shared uh, i have had a similar experience so my so if the client says i have had dosa in the morning and i i am really hungry at this point in the coaching session i would rather uh, you know think about the dosa as to uh, how i like it what is it done uh, yeah. so you, you see that that it becomes a parallel track the client is yeah. on another track you are mentally are going on a divergent direction hmm. and does that happen i mean can we honestly acknowledge and accept that that, that I think it yeah it it definitely yes. happens yes a quick situation sujatha came to session and starts talking about her mother in law who keeps disturbing her by calling her up in the office often sujatha feels that her mom in law has no respect for her job she also talks about how she's so frustrated that she feels like shifting out of the house and lives separately with her husband and now the coach is thinking is she just venting out or is this a coaching topic for her now the coach is thinking oh my god my mom in law is the same man <laughs> now the coach is thinking how is this connected to the goal that we started talking about in the beginning of the conversation how do i take her back over there the coach is thinking why can't she just talk to her husband it's so simple the coach is thinking if i were her i would straight away talk to my mom in law now in this entire space do you think the coach is really listening no no the coach is not listening thank god my mom in law is not the same right drawing parallels or maybe i have had a similar experience and now my mind is processing that information maybe for a fraction of a second maybe just for a quick one minute but during that space i've already lost the client so the question that i need to ask myself that am i really listening in a coaching conversation am i really listening you know if if you look at the pcc marker of actively listens and from there if you look at the mcc bar that they say they say they say that the 
coach considers the client context identity environment experience value belief to enhance understanding of what the client is communicating if you really look at the look at the bar that mcc talks about they don't talk about listening with this particular intent so the question comes to my mind is that when i'm listening to the client what is my intent of listening icf says be curious but what is my curiosity is it of a tourist where i'm just picking up my camera and clicking pictures without without even seeking permission of the client or does my curiosity has a very good intent of listening and being empathetic for the client you know we all we all are coaches and i'm sure many of us are really practicing coaches and so was i and i really thought i'm good before i joined mcc and i came across all these concepts the client has a current situation that he is narrating but having said that the client always have a background the client also has some belief system that he's formed over a period of time basis that belief system the client has an opinion which he is not sharing with me right now he is only sharing the situation with me and the client already has wearing his lens his frame of reference he already has formed a perception around his life people and environment which he may not openly tell me and just to just to talk about the mcc bars and markers and competencies whatever we may speak to let's pay attention to this which says that the coach considers the client's context identity environment experience value belief to enhance understanding of what the client is communicating the coach responds to the client into a deeper exploration of client's thinking and behavior not the situation the coach observes the client's emotions energy and non verbal cues not only what the coach is coach is talking about and most important is that the coach reflects what the client communicates in relation to the context of the whole person not that particular situation or taking the coachy towards some fixed actionable that may be playing in our mind during that conversation so so my so my now my invitation to all of you is you know let's look at a quick example the client comes to a coaching conversation and she says that that look preet um the organization feels they've given a feedback to me that you know i'm not assertive and my team feels that i don't stand for them and now the 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 the, the organization wants this person to go through coaching so that the person can change this entire behavior she says that it's very difficult for me to have a difficult conversation so if if i'm talking to my boss who's an authority figure i cannot say no so if my boss has said something i have to say yes whether it is realistic or unrealistic so my team feels that i don't stand by them because i go up to the leadership and i listen and agree to whatever they say and now when i come back my team is very you know they they've they've stopped listening to me and it's very difficult for me to have this difficult conversation now that's a client's current situation when i explored the client a little bit uh, being curious about the background or the belief or opinion or perception she shared with me slowly the roots when she said that you know when i was a little child my father was very dominating and and the moment i see my mother raising her voice in front of my father there was a lot of fights in our house now based on this background i developed a belief system that it's useless to argue you should not argue especially when it comes to authority people and based on that the opinion she formed is that you know let them say whatever i am going to do whatever i feel like doing later so hence i don't speak in front of my leadership and i don't really care what my team thinks so i will do what i have to do but i can't have this difficult conversation and the perception which came out was that if i speak the other person is going to bulldoze me 
no when you when you dig deeper and i'm sure many of you would have experienced this in many conversation with the clients that when you dig deeper the whole situation sometimes may turn out to be something very different completely and it's only when the coachy shows the roots that we are able to get the real data the real information and if i as a coach have the capability to listen to that not what the client is sharing but how the client is sharing if i'm curious enough to know a little bit about the context of this situation the identity that the client is showing the environment in which the client was brought up in the experience of the client related to this situation and what is the belief system that client carries about it that is where the real shift for the client happens observing clients emotions and energy and bold underlined non verbal cues it's not the information that the client is sharing it's not the tree it's the roots that matter a lot in a coaching conversation this has been my experience sometimes they'll say something and then they sigh and then they look other side and then they get silent and then finally they say what they have to say what should a coach listen to here what is it that a coach should try to listen to here uh probably reflect back what has just happened like you you are looking at the other side uh so what's happening something like that just be curious wonderful so as a coach should my attention go to the words that the coach is sharing or the silent space that happened so as you said uh, how the coach is saying it that would help us the sigh uh, looking into the other side these inner energy shifts this body movements so something within that coach is regulating these body movements try to find out what is that mm. try to listen to what is that the coach is sitting in a coaching session like this in a virtual call and the topic is that the organization feels that you need to really build relationships with your team and suddenly coach is oh pre or oh, don't talk to me about relationships it's that whole body language which is telling so much which is telling so much it's the rolling of the eyes which is telling so much it's the rocking like this is telling so much so many a times it's it's these non verbal cues i have seen it gives you so much information that even only words that the coach is trying to say it doesn't give you that information now uh, you know for example the coach in the in a conversation the coach has coach is sharing some information and in between you see the energy shift and and i'm not saying we don't observe it uh, many of us are great coaches we do observe it but i'm just sharing from my perspective that you know asking questions in that space that that abhishek i observed that you were saying something and then you paused and then again you said something what were you thinking during that pause kbi observed that you just became silent in between and then you looked down what happened then i i observed that you just sank back into the chair what were you thinking then it's during these times that the client's mind is processing a lot of information a lot of experience a lot of insights he may be getting 
as a coach, if we miss onto those spaces and continue to ask information around the tree, we are not doing deep listening. As a coach, somewhere I feel that we must develop this habit of listening more somatically, which means that what is the message that my body is sharing with me right now? Right now that I'm listening to the client, what is my body telling me? Is there a feeling in my belly at that time? Is there a tightness of muscle? Is there a goosebump that I can feel listening to the experience of a kochi? Is my heart beating? How's my breath? As a coach, becoming more aware about what's going on in your own body at that time during a client conversation helps you to become more aware and be more present in the session. But if my mind and body are not connected, there are chances that I may miss out to extremely important non-verbal information in that coaching conversation. So let's take a quick pause right now. And I just want you to quickly just either close your eyes for a second or not close your eyes and just get aware about feeling in your body right now. What is it? Am I able to recognize? The sensation in my own body. Am I able to recognize what I'm thinking at that time? When the client is sharing some information, am I able to recognize that I'm stuck? I'm just stuck and I'm thinking about what to ask next. So, in, in, in journey from PCC to MCC, it's more behavioral. It's more connecting with your own senses. It's more about deeper listening. It is more about observing the emotion, the energy, the body shift, the non-verbal cues, all of that. It is more around the bars. And not only tick marking, you know, and thinking constantly that are we going towards the actionable or not. Another thing that 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 I that I that really caught my attention is you know evoking awareness. Again, I said that for me it's all related to the uh, to the listening competency. The very the very statement says that the coach facilitates insights and learning by using tools and techniques such as powerful questioning, silence, metaphor, or analogy. Very well said by Ramdas, an American spiritual teacher. We are fascinated by the words, but where we meet is in the silence behind them. And ICF uses the term partnering the client. I'm going to be able to be partner, partner with the client only if I meet him. And I can only meet him in the silence behind the words. So how well, how well do I develop this whole simple competency of just listening deeply? A quick reflective question for all of us. What is your relationship with silence? Silence is a very important part of listening. 
if you think about right now, what is your relationship with silence? What comes to your mind when you think of the word silence? What when comes I'm to your mind? Anything. Sorry? When I'm not thinking anything. When I'm not, not thinking anything. Way. Sandeep says reflection. Yeah, Preet, what I feel is it sometimes makes me uncomfortable. Mm. Uh, wanted to speak, jump into the conversation. That mm. is what. Mm. And thank you so much for acknowledging that. And I've been there. And silence can be very uncomfortable for many of us. Uh, competency 5 in PCC says, uh, the marker says, uh, maintains presence. You know, it says that coach allows for silence, pause and reflection. It's very important for us as coaches to understand what is my relationship with silence, especially in a coaching conversation otherwise also but right now we are talking from the context of coaching so primarily as a coach what is my relationship with silence am I uncomfortable I asked a question from the client and the client answered and immediately I have to ask the next question I'm uncomfortable with silence I asked a question the coach is not answering Immediately, I have to ask again or rephrase it. Trust me, if the client has not understood your question, he will clarify. But as a coach, if I have asked a question and the client has not answered for some time, it's, it's now running in my mind. Maybe he's not understood my question. Can I ask him a different question? But how about silence there? Some people need a lot of time to process what you've thrown at him. The client has already answered, but the client may just be taking a pause in his thinking. But that wheel is still turning in his mind. But it's uncomfortable for the coach to stay silent there. So deep listening, deep listening comes only if we are able to understand our relationship with silence and ask myself that what is this discomfort with silence when I am in a coaching session? When all should a coach be silent during a coaching session? Let's think about it. Let's think about it. That when should a coach be silent in a coaching session? What are those opportunities for us as coaches to just be silent? Any thoughts? Wonderful. When the client seems to be thinking, post an emotional share by the client. Absolutely, Shwani. Thanks for saying that. When the client is reflecting or when they are emotional or when they are thinking deeper. You asked a thought-provoking question from the client. Client is thinking, although he's answered, but he's still thinking. And now I'm in a hurry to ask the next question. Because actionable. In order to leave space for a new or beautiful, in order to leave space for a new answer. So, when you're observing that the client is looking somewhere else, hmm, yeah, the client is looking somewhere else, which means he's still thinking. You challenged the client. You asked him a very challenging question. Right? 
a challenging question is a question which is somewhere challenging the coach's belief system. What he just said, you asked a challenging question from the client. Now the client is thinking, allow him time to process. That's a beautiful opportunity for us to be silent. So as a coach, in my experience, when you move from PCC markers to MCC bar, it's all about identifying these opportunities and spaces in a coaching conversation where as a coach, I can utilize silence. Also, if the coach doesn't have the next question. Hmm. So, so I think uh, from this, what comes to my mind is that um, that let's let's think about this. That in a coaching conversation, who should the silence be for? Should it be for the coach or for the client? The client. The silence is for the client. For both. Hmm. So, so let us say, okay, now let's say, um, let's say one is a natural use of silence where I've identified opportunities. I'm, I'm just going with the flow. I'm with the client. I'm partnering the clients. Uh, there are beautiful spaces which I'm able to identify where I'm silent and lots and lots of, you know, insights are coming up. The client is pouring a lot of things in front of us and I'm using silence in a very organic way. And now there is a situation when I'm constantly thinking, what next question can I ask? And now I'm silent. The client has shared. He's done. But now I am struggling as a coach. What next can I ask? And now there is silence. Now that could be awkward. When I've shared some observ when I when I observed something in the client, uh, something about what he said or the energy shift or something, but I'm now a little hesitant in I'm just hesitant in thinking should I or should I not? Right, that's the silence for the coach. When I am also stuck with the client, the client is stuck, and I am also stuck, and now I'm panicking because I don't know what to do. That's not a silence for the client. So how do we manage these situations? Let's say I'm stuck. The client is stuck. Every session that the client comes to, he or she is stuck in the same thing. No, Preet, it's not about me. It's our organization is like that. My boss is not cooperative. Now the client is stuck and so am I. And now I'm silent. Now, when the silence is too much for a coach, it may not work. But what a coach has to think about is that how much possibility or opportunity for the client that I can offer and how would me being silent can really contribute in the client pouring out more information. So when I have asked a thought-provoking question, if I asked a challenging question, if the client is in an emotional state, you asked something the client is not answering immediately, these are some of the spaces I can observe and utilize to be more silent. Coming to the metaphor and listening to the analogy and listening to the phrases that sometimes the client uses, it's so powerful, it's so powerful. Trust me, the day I realized that this is such a powerful space to observe in a coaching conversation. Some of the sessions that, that were conducted, they were super powerful. You know, in their own narrations, the coachy, the coachy has his own vocabulary. The coachy is sharing a lot of vocabulary coming from sports, coming from history, coming from nutrition, coming from movies. And as a coach, Am I listening to that? One of the clients who's one of the biggest area was 
to be able to build relationships with the team. Uh, the situation looked very transactional. The coach, the client shared some information data, and when 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 I tried to go deeper into you know exploring more the belief system of the client, the past experience of the client, and in one of the visualization activity, the client, I asked the client that okay. You know, if you just close your eyes, where do you see yourself? So he said that, um, well, I see myself inside a fort. And then I asked the client that, who's inside the fort? He said, me and my family. And I said, who's outside? He said, the whole world. And I said, what else do you see? He said, tall walls. I see tall walls. And I said, how tall are they? He said, very tall. Okay. Now, now the moment the client shared this analogy, this entire the, the entire visualization that he has of himself, whereby the whole world is outside that fort and he's inside that fort, it has a very, it had a deep rooted belief system. Before this, the client was only showing me the tree. But when you go deeper and deeper, the client offers this kind of a visualization and certain terminology. Over a period of time, I realized that this client is really influenced by reading a lot of history books. A lot of history books. So he's always talking about wars. He's talking about, you know, uh, the, the Ford, uh, all of that. And of course, then we went deep down, understood the roots, understood the past, uh, his childhood experiences, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And his automatically his entire awareness, uh, you know, went up. And after two three sessions, he came to the session and said that, "Preet, um, you know what? I've started a little, a small thing within my organization. The the client is at a CEO level, so he said that you know now I'm I'm reaching out to people." And to my team members, to my leaders, to my peers, I'm reaching out to them. And uh, I'm also telling them that, you know, the door of the fort is open for all of you. I'm not able to lower down the walls, but I've created a door inside that fort. And not only I've created a door inside the fort, but also I'm telling people that there is a door and the door is open. So feel free to walk inside. So paying attention to the, to the coaches phrases, metaphors, you know, what words is he using? It's extremely powerful level of listening. I'm very curious to know if any of you, you know, in any of you experienced this kind of a narration from your coaching conversation, which you remember. With the client landed up using metaphors, you know, coming from the history, quoting uh, examples from movies, sports examples if any of you remember the expression that the coachy may talk about the coachy may say look uh, you know my mind is all clouded right now now instead of paying attention to this word cloud we ask him the next question, which is more transactional question. Vizav is paying attention to the to the whole feeling that the coach said and asking them questions around that. Preet, I had uh, I, I, one of my works is actually with uh, inner storytelling. So um, uh, I've had some fascinating experiences around working with metaphors. Wonderful. Um, so one of one of the clients. Um, wanted to work on his branding <clears throat> and he had uh, difficulty in actually you know, going on LinkedIn and starting. Uh, so we navigated colors, then we went into somewhere on handkerchief, the kerchief represented something, then a lot of uh, structures in and around that space. So that was one experience I had. Mm -hmm. Are you able to hear me? It says my bandwidth is low and I don't no, know. No, 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 we are able to hear you. Perfect. Yeah. So, and then another client said, uh, you know, it looks like I am behind a, a very similar to a wall. So, there, there is something else that I see on the other side. Mm. Uh, and uh, there is, uh, so her name, possibly if it is uh, Sunil, 
the she said uh, you know the other side somebody is there and when i asked who who's there on the other side uh, it was the name ulta so basically the ulta version of the name and we went on to explore how young how old etc etc who who where is the ball there's a uh, this thing so uh, i i am a story writer so for me it was uh, fascinating just just listening to the inner uh, story there was so there were aspects of there's a wall somebody can jump over but i don't i can jump over but they can't jump over yeah, this side uh, we meet once in two years three years uh, during my birthday so there's so many um, um, things around that place and i remember because they are metaphors uh, mm. and that's why it, it stays with me as a coach uh, okay. so many many incidents around metaphors and stories uh, so that that's been my experience wonderful mm. thank you so much sunil for sharing that the client talking a lot of sports sports thing in the session you know a lot of sports and he shows that he has interest in sports and when it came to way forward now the client is stuck that of about the current situation i don't know what can what i can do i think i've tried everything i can't do anything else now simply posing a question that you know okay sunil um, you love sports now Oh, let's imagine it if this was a tournament or if this was a match and you were the captain of this match what advice would you give to your team you are going to participate in a tournament right now and now virat kohli comes what advice will he give you now the coach is able to think like this because that's the space that he's so familiar with so paying attention and listening So, what is that area that the coach is constantly during the conversation talking about? Is he quoting a lot of things from history? You know, the coach is saying, "Oh, you know, I read this book. Chanakya said so and so. Oh, I read this historical book. It was written with so and so." And listening to this and making a mental note helps us when we move ahead to the actionable part. And that had been my experience. that listening to the metaphors that the coach uses implementing deep silence exploring you know what else what else can we explore being curious over there but being aware about the intent of my curiosity i think this entire space has been extremely meaningful for me moving from pcc to mcc i'm sure even during pcc we do listen but in my journey when i moved to the whole mcc space the listening became extremely extremely deep and i think it's due to that listening the remaining competencies like you know being more present in the session getting rid of that mental chatter not drawing parallels just partnering the client and hence not thinking about the next question all of that automatically fell in place and the moment all of that happens trust me i'm sure we know that the breakthroughs of the clients happen at a different level altogether which may not be only related to the goal that the coachy has set in the session but much much bigger than that and and that's why i thought you know it's a great idea to kind of talk about active and deep listening and paying attention to the metaphors and analogy keeping time in mind i'm very happy to i've spoken a lot uh, rarely we get this opportunity to talk so i've spoken a lot uh, but i'm really happy to listen to if, if you have something in mind right now this is what we just talked about the whole listening space the deep listening the silence what is it that is in your mind right now happy to listen to that share in the chat box or unmute and talk and while we do that uh a quick i would say activity or actionable for us as coaches is that who all or whom am i willing to listen to in the next 21 days we all know why 21 days this whole habit forming the whole observation in these next 21 days you know when there is silence in a coaching conversation what is my body's reaction to that 
what is happening in my body in that silence how uncomfortable or comfortable am i with silence when there is silence what am i doing at that time is there anybody that you can identify in your life that you're willing to listen to partially by speaking but partially in silence too and one of the very powerful activities is really helped me understand my relationship if with silence is whenever we have little bit of time we can we can do that is close your eyes for 3 minutes good long 3 minutes and in those 3 minutes get connected with the silence and think what is it that i'm not listening to in my own self and this constant observation and awareness about how i feel when i'm silent how i feel when me and the other person is also silent trust me it helps us to get to that whole different zone of awareness where then we are really in that whole space of practicing this silence here in the coaching session where we are able to listen to the silence where we are able to observe the body cues the non verbal cues that the coach is given and this in turn strengthens the coaching conversation and abhishek has i think abhishek is ready for uh, the most difficult task <laughs> not only 21 days but he said it could be forever which is my why <laughs> i'm going to stay connected with you abhishek you can't escape after writing this and sunil says uh, i'm willing to listen to myself so powerful i as great master raman ramana maharishi says yes uh, very very difficult space also prashant but yeah uh that's okay toby thank you so much for attending the session and and yeah that's it i think that's all from my side uh pardon me if i spoke too much but yeah as i said that this is one of my favorite areas moving from pcc to mcc i was very very excited to bring this as a topic and and just share my experience with all of you thank you so much for listening and thank you abhishek for creating this whole possibility please uh, if you have questions do we do you do have time or oh yeah 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 please okay so um listening is it always going to be either i am listening or i am not listening or it can be i'm listening 50% i'm not listening 50% is it something which is in between also how is how is that anybody wants to answer this wonderful wonderful thought i think is it black and white or is it a gray in between <laughs> yeah, it's thought? always gray it's yeah. never black and white yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, I I agree, Sandeep. It, it, somewhere, yeah. Sorry, please go ahead. Yeah, it's also it could be other as well, right? Uh, yeah. uh, sorry, sir. Can you go on? Yeah, yeah. Th- thanks, Sandeep. Uh, so it could be other as also that I'm completely zoned out. Mm-hmm. There is there is a possibility. I think it it's not just gray. I think possibly the easiest way to put it is a spectrum. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. and thanks for bringing that uh, uh, kani i remember once uh, you know uh, i was just getting into a coaching conversation and uh, while i'm just about to open the door of my home office my daughter comes she's 24 years old and she's in a particular career and she suddenly says that you know look mom i don't think i'm going to continue in this career i'm going to change my career <laughs> now it's nothing gray for me in the session <laughs> now it's either black or white right and here i am sitting and i'm zoned out and i'm constantly thinking that oh my god what a challenge but what i learned in my mcc journey is it's so beautiful i just didn't even take a second to just say this to my coachy i'm like so and so i'm really sorry but i'm totally zoned out right now so is it okay if we take just about 5 minutes pause and i just have some water and the client said 
but of course it's okay breathe please go ahead so many times i've had this experience when i'm stuck i i'm stuck i don't know what to ask and i used to struggle so much that oh my god now this person is judging me you know i'm stuck how can i be stuck i should have a question handy right and it's it's the moment the moment i went ahead into this entire concept of partnering with the client i'm i'm so fluid in telling the client that you know look look prashant it i am observing that you are a little stuck right now and you know honestly so am i i'm stuck with you so what would you suggest where can we focus on the conversation to move forward and this little body language you know asking the client where can we focus to move forward is an indication that we both are stuck so let's move forward and i think this whole honesty with the client and this whole you know open to be vulnerable with the client it's it's openness to share emotion with the client it it, it makes the behavior of a coach very very fluid very seamless no pressure no lifting the heavy weight of what next can i ask so i think that had been my experience but yeah kani the moment you said i realized that it can be sometimes black or white also but most of the times as andeep rightly said it's like that gray where i'm partially here partially not here is is there any way i know that i'm not white i'm gray is there any any anything from your experience which i can do a litmus test any hack somebody has in mind yeah so a response of the client of the client will tell you one of the ways absolutely absolutely and i think you will also realize that uh, thing you know you are not on the same path so possibly if you are imagining two cars going on the same track uh, like that that's how you see it with coaching one of the tracks is one of the cars is lagging behind so that that's how you see it so you it it comes to your uh, conscious awareness that we are not on the same pace same track so that's one possibly your body will also tell you saying you know i'm not thinking about this person your, your body is a excellent indicator yeah i agree i agree your breath will also tell you anything so also for me personally it helped me to identify the triggers when i when i auto cut or when i zone out you know what are what are those what are those kind of mm. conversation when i'm when i'm like i'm not there you know so 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 why am i not there i am either bored many times i'm bored it's the fifth session the client is constantly repeating same information and i'm bored so zone out right something has happened in my life outside my daughter i am zoned out immediately after this call there is another call aligned and the client is very difficult so i am out i am not here so what what worked for me is the simple activity that whole somatic listening that when i'm when i'm in a coaching conversation i'm constantly reminding myself that hey observe so when you are able to observe your own body's reaction you suddenly realize i'm not listening and and the moment you learn it that right now i'm in a gray zone and right now i'm just not listening at all it's there when you when you you know automatically come to come to the solution of what to there's no hack per se there is no hack per se and also i have realized that till the time we stay on that transactional conversation you know set the goal um, find the reality find the way forward look for option when it is that transactional then there is a tendency to zone out 
But when you're really curious and you're just going deep and observing the emotions of the client and observing the energy of the client and observing what is shifting in his body at that time and it is no more transactional, there are less chances of zoning out. If I may add, uh, I think during the session, of course, you all spoke about a lot of indicators, but you know, in the beginning and the end of the session as a coach, if you uh, set intentions, take five minutes before the session to check in with yourself as to, you know, is there something in my uh, surroundings that's kind of bothering me? Is there something that's going on that'll hinder me listening or maintaining presence in the session has really uh, helped me. As Pezzas, post the session, spending a quick five minutes reflecting on whether I was listening or not, you know, or what kind of came in the way. Mm -hmm. And just acknowledging it also really helps yes. uh, uh, to be present next time. Yes. So it's, I think like presence, listening is also a journey. <laughs> and yes. as we grow, as we coach more, our listening also deepens with our presence. Uh, and it is like, there is no, now you're listening and now you're not. <laughs> Yeah. It's it. Sometimes we are sometimes listening from a space we're sitting. Like if I say uncover a bias I have tomorrow, I was listening from a space where that bias is there. Now I'm aware mm. of it, so I'm going to listen with that awareness that I have one bias. I can keep it away. Yes. So I think yeah, that's also something yes. I want. I totally agree. Wonderful, Shivani. And yeah, I mean after after a couple of sessions, each session just just keep those markers handy. And after each session, just, just review it that, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much was the trust and safety? Not only for exam purpose, that's all over. But then for our further improvement purpose, how about I review myself after each session? That yeah. really, really helps. Also, you know, in my personal experience, listening is not limited to the coaching space. How about I just go out and practice it with others? And that elevates the whole capability of listening. Am I listening to my daughter? Am I listening to my husband? Am I listening to my peer? Am I listening to my, uh, you know, the, the team member? So, practicing listening at every area, trust me, it enhances the capability of a coach to listen in the session. Because if outside I don't have that capability, here I'm trying to develop it. It's, you know, it's like a, it's when I'm wearing a coach's hat, I'm listening, but outside I'm not. So it's very difficult to play that role. So I think practicing a little bit of intentional listening outside, it helps to increase our listening in the session. And, and that's why this activity, that whom am I willing to listen in the next 21 days? Uh, Otto Sharma also has a very interesting four levels of listening. If you haven't seen it, you should. It's very interesting to see listening at different levels. Yeah. And also, I don't know how many of you have read this simple book called How to Listen. Oh, amazing. I mean, I've never seen or heard, I mean, I've never read this kind of a book where somebody can, um, Oscar Trimble is the author. How, how in a, such a simplified way he's narrated that whole the whole listening thing, it's beautiful. It straightway touches the heart. So it's a great read. So yeah. I think great guys. Thank you so much for your questions and thank you so much for listening so patiently. And hopefully... I'll be in that space of listening to some of you next Wednesday. Over to you, Abhishek, in case you want to conclude. Uh, thank you so much, uh, because at the end of the day, you know, having this kind of inputs are ex exceptionally important. It's not only as a coach, as a professional, we become better through listening. And I really started, you know, understanding the art of shutting up only after getting into coaching. And I'm <laughs> I'm sure my family members are very happy about it. You know? uh, so, yes, I think that book, the recommendation, what you gave, certainly, yes, if many of us wouldn't have read it. So we'll take it up. 
and uh, thank you so much. It just went on you know, too much of reflection. Yes, maybe this weekend I would also start thinking about the reflection pattern. And thank you so much for giving your time. It was wonderful having you. Thanks My a pleasure. Lot. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Abhishek, for this.